Hello, I'm Howard Brown, Manager of Agronomy Services, and today we're going to present to you a few tools that you need to take as you go to the field for service calls. If you have a working knowledge of agronomy, you may feel that's enough that you can share with a grower and help solve his problem and gain his business. However, I advise you to think about the tools of the trades you could take with you. Now, there can be many or few, but we're going to present to you a few of those tools today. Now, one I feel is a very important tool that everybody should have, and that's a water source. It can be simply a five gallon bucket with a spigot on it, or you can be a little more elaborate with a 25 gallon tank with an on-demand pump. Simple device that we have, ready to go. And what would you use water for? Well, it's unlimited. You can wash off the roots because you can't really see what's on the roots unless you wash them off. You can also wash your hands, and if somebody's giving you a hard time, you can squirt them as well. Robert, what other tools can we use? Howard, the, uh, the basic tool, in my opinion, that you need to take to the field is a spade. It's really difficult to diagnose a situation in a lot of cases if you're not able to dig a plan up. The above ground symptoms may not be all that you need to take a look at. And with the spade, you can dig up any size plant, take a look at the roots, bring them back to the vehicle if you need to, wash them off so that you can get a better shot of them. If nothing else, take a spade to the field on a service call. One of the things that we always want to remember to do is after we use our spade is to clean it up. As you can see, it's got dirt on it. It's probably got a little moisture on it. Um, the spade is going to rust if we don't keep it clean. So carrying something as simple as a brush and some steel wool once you're done not only helps to keep it clean, but it also may be a point of conversation with the grower that really sets you apart from the competition. Next tool we like to talk about is a soil penetrometer. It essentially measures resistance as you push it into the soil. There's all kinds out there. The one I have in my hand is about $200 from Spectrum Technologies. Uh, you can also get one, a Dickie John penetrometer. It's got an oil-filled gauge on it. And the purpose of the gauge or the monitoring device is to allow you to see the pressure change as you push. But you don't have to have a fancy gauge. You can have a tile probe, as long as you can feel the resistance as you push the probe into the ground. And that makes the difference. This way you can show a farmer if there's a shallow compacted zone or if there's difference in, in density of the soil as you're pushing down, showing some issues with roots. Howard, one of the other tools that I always like to take with me on a service call is some sort of measuring device. It can be anything as simple as a 25-foot tape measure or a 300-foot wheel tape, or also you could take a measuring wheel along with you in order to measure distance off. The importance of the tape or the measuring tool in my mind is basic and that is to find out what the plant population is. We all know how to, to measure plant population, particularly um, if, if we're looking, trying to determine where it's at and from just an emergent standpoint or even in a replant situation, but a measuring tool is essential to go to the field with. The next tool we'd like to talk about is a soil probe. Soil probes can come in a variety of lengths, sizes, and, and of course, costs. And the ones I have today uh, to show you are both serve different purposes. This is a standard probe. The, the aspect of this probe I like, it is a tapered tube, so it's small to large, so that when I push it into the soil and I lift it up, it's easy for the soil to fall out. It makes it real easy to collect a sample. Comes with a cleaning brush. The next soil probe is a little more uh, specialized. This probe has a 12 inch core. And the purpose of this core is if someone wants to determine nitrate nitrogen in their soils, most of the nitrogen work that we've done is calibrated to a 12 inch depth. The seven inch core is of course just for a normal soil test. So you need to have a specialized probe when you're doing tests that involve nitrate nitrogen. Howard, the next series of tools that I'd like to talk about that um, individuals may want to take on a service call with them um, are relatively small tools. As you can see, I'm holding them all in the palm of my hand, but each serves a specific purpose. The first one um, is a Hume Seed Finder, just a relatively small plastic device that, um, that allows you to dig in the row and find the seed, and not only find it, but it comes with a, a measuring tool on it. You can understand how deep the seed is planted may help you determine um, some situations with emergence problems. Another tool that crop specialists may want to take to the field with them is just a simple pocket knife. These can be used for a variety of, of different things, anywhere from finding seed or insects to slicing a plant open, um, which allows you to stage it throughout the growing season. A putty knife uh, may seem like an, an odd thing to carry with you, but this as well can be used for different things, uh, mainly for digging, again, finding insects or um, seed depth. 
And the last tool is a hand lens. Uh, these can come in handy for identifying insect species or disease organisms on a plant. So just four small tools that every crop specialist probably wants to take on a service call. A more specialized tool that you can take with you to the field would be a pH meter. If you think of all the ways you could use a pH meter uh, to determine whether or not the pH of the surface is high, to determine whether or not the soil is acidic, this pH meter is called a field scout. It's a relatively ruggedized pH meter. The electrodes are in the bottom of, of the pH meter and that makes it special. So if you're out in the field and you want to take a pH, with the electrodes in the bottom, simply you have to wet the surface, stick the, uh, the electrodes on the wet surface and read the, the meter. So it's simple, simple to do when you're in the field.